Good afternoon. My name is Chris Hammer. I am Deputy General Counsel at the New York City Conflicts of Interest Board. Welcome to the Conflicts of Interest Board's public hearing, which is being pers held pursuant to Section 1043E of the City Administrative Procedure Act. On the agenda this afternoon is a proposal to amend Board Rules Section 102 and to adopt Board Rules Section 115, each of which involve community board service. We welcome any comments regarding these proposed rules. Each person has up to three minutes to speak. Please state your name and affiliation and the proposed rule you are speaking about. Good morning, everyone. My name is Patricia A. Charles. I'm from Community Board 11 in the Bronx. And I'm not sure whether or not this was mandated for me to be here. Um, but I, it was very interesting that I wanted to make sure that I understood um, the rules and regulations of the commu our community boards. Um, it's very important that people like myself that are fairly new and still don't know the, the ins and outs of the boards, the, our job description, um, even though we're planted in a position because there's someone just left that we, you know, they're being replaced. But for myself, I know I would want to be voted in and not just bumped up. So that's the rules and regulations that I would stand by myself if I was in charge of any type of organization or agency. So uh, as far as the rules and regulations that you are proposing right now, I didn't get a chance to read all of them, but the ones that I did read are pertaining to, you know, different meetings and how we vote and how we are supposed to uh, be neutral and not be favorative of, you know, other either organizations or agencies that might be affiliated with that particular person. So it's it's not fair that if you do want to have show favoritism that shouldn't be a way um, that we move forward. So that I know now that you would have to dismiss yourself from that particular voting process in order for you to be neutral. So these are the things that I'm just explaining as far as I'm concerned as being part of Community Board 11 that um, I'm proud that now we do have term limits because the term limits are in place so that we can mentor some young people so that we can bring in new energy, new blood, and, and, and introduce them to um, how things are run in, in that particular arena. So once we help the younger generation, you know, bring forth their understanding of the whole process, then they can position themselves to, you know, pick up the baton and, and move on so that we can have a stronger community board. So thank you so very much for listening. And um, it's a, it's a, I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, executive staff of the Conflicts of Interest Board. My name is Alex Camarda. I'm the senior policy advisor at, for reInvent Albany. reInvent Albany is a government watchdog organization that advocates for open and accountable government. We largely focus on Albany, uh, but we have an interest in strengthening ethics in New York City because the city serves as a model for better ethics laws and practices. I'm just going to summarize the major points of our testimony. Um, First, uh, we think this exercise that uh, the COIB is conducting is very important, which is to promulgate rules for its many advisory opinions going back years so that we clearly establish bright lines for public servants as to what is proper conduct and improper conduct. So we um, commend you for, that, for your effort on promulgating rules on community boards and for other topics that you've done and are going to do um, subsequently. Um, we think for the most part the, the rules, the draft rules that you've put forth are strike the right balance between recognizing that community boards are um, advisory in nature in terms of making decisions and staffed by part-time public servants. At the same time, um, they do have a great deal of influence uh, over the budget through the input they provide, even though it's advisory, um, certainly their, their voice matters. And so uh, we generally support most of the draft rules. We support uh, the COIB's position that 
community board members should not appear on behalf of a government entity they serve before the members community board or vote on any matter involving that entity. We agree with the restrictions on chairing community boards or committees or subcommittee meetings um, on a regular basis or for a particular meeting where there's a conflict. And we also believe that um, community boards, because they do not have substantial policy discretion, um, I'm sorry, that they, they're, that they do not have substantial policy discretion, so they don't have that designation. Uh, with respect to um, changes to the rules, we have a, a few suggestions. Um, as far as what's written there in the rules, the, the main difference of opinion we have is with regards to the, um, the requirement that members can recuse themselves from voting but still discuss a topic which they have a conflict on. We're not opposed to them discussing the topic, but we think they should be only, only uh, be able to do so in a public meeting. The issue that we have with kind of disclose and recuse regimes is that it's very hard to, to monitor conversations that don't occur in the public eye and make sure that those disclosures are really happening. Uh, it's, I think, very difficult from a com compliance perspective. So we think it's reasonable to say that these members who are conflicted can talk about it in a public meeting but should not do so in a non-public forum, informal conversations. Um, we also think that there were certain advisory opinions that were not addressed by the board. Uh, I believe there were eight of them um, in the rules, and we think that at least two of them that we looked at we thought should be addressed. Uh, one was Advisory Opinion 1993-3, and that related to community board members who are also serving on a local development corporation. We felt like they were uh, serving on a local development corporation is really no different than serving on an agency or another governmental entity, and so we believe that if a member has a conflict, they should not be able to vote on the community board uh, regarding the matter that they have a conflict on with the local development corporation that they serve on. On advisory opinion 20-1, which dealt with community board members who serve on a community education council, um, we think that for those members who serve on both a CEC and a community board that they shouldn't be able to chair a community board committee uh, that deals with education. And that's just to preserve the difference in views between on education between the community board and the CEC. We think that would uh, give too much input or control to the CEC member who also serves on the community board. And then on the last topic f that we wanted to address was really actions that we think COIB should take that are apart from the rulemaking. Uh, we think that community boards who do have conflicts or may not be aware of conflicts need to be better educated about the ethics rules that you're promulgating and the ethics laws more generally. And so we think uh, education should be done of community boards. We don't have a full um, understanding of all the education that the COIB does, but I know that they do at trainings for public servants at agencies. Um, if it's not being al already done, we think that there should be di trainings done of district managers. Um, and given that there are as many as 2,950 community board members, if all the positions are full, there probably should be a big training periodically for all the community board members as well. And we think that the COIB could, you know, periodically check in with boards to make sure that they're following the rules, even if they don't receive a complaint about a board. And then lastly, uh, we talked about uh, a database, perhaps, of <clears throat> disclosures and recusals from voting that would at least caption that the, that the COIB could um, create that would capture how frequently these conflicts are occurring across boards because we receive anecdotal reports, there's some press reports, but we really don't have a sense of how many community boards members have conflicts, how often that they are um, recusing themselves or disclosing it. Uh, and we know, we know that many community board members do serve on, on uh, government entities or agencies. And, and one point I, I neglected to mention was we think that um, any disclosure 
at a community board meeting of a conflict should be recorded in the community board minutes, which are supposed to be made publicly available. So that's another way for the, the public to see how many there may be and that they're, that they're being, um, the rules are being followed with respect to the disclosure. So with that, I'll close and, and welcome any questions you may have and thanks for the opportunity to testify. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for attending. There being no further comments, this meeting is now closed.